Yes. It's a night of murder and intrigue. Are you ready to get murdered? It is 8.59 on the East Coast here in New York. It is a Saturday night, and I've got a brand new seat that I'm sitting in. In fact, everybody in the room has a brand new seat that they're sitting in because I put them together today, and now I'm just maybe one or two little tiny cherries on top of getting this place exactly polished the way I like it. And we've got a a whole year's worth of in-studio guests coming in. I just don't know who they are yet. But tonight... We've got a great little gaggle of people. I can't wait to introduce them all. Or reintroduce. Well, no, some are being introduced. One is being introduced. Everybody else is reintroduced. So let's jump on it. Uh, Right next to me, you all know him as Matt. His name is Matt. What's going on, dude? Hello, Francis. How you feeling from yesterday? You feeling all right? I'm all right. Yeah, you seem seem well. Uh, Yeah, I am very well. Is, is the the room glowing in a sufficient way tonight? Yes, it's glowing like the orange man. Yes, it's you, glorious. You were telling some of our friends over here in this in, in the room about the the day that you touched Donald Trump's beast and uh, I was blessed. And he and he healed he, your tooth. He cured my uh, my tooth that I needed a root canal on. It fell out and there's no more pain, so I left it. See, there you have it. On the couch, we've got Anthony hanging out. A little bit of hookah action. Anthony, how you feeling? <laughs> what the hell? Oh, oh there you go. Go ahead now. Uh, pretty good. Feeling pretty good. <laughs> Everybody's feeling good. <laughs> and on the other side of the room, uh, welcome back to re- to everything. What's up, Frank? John Ward. I'm the murderer that was mentioned at the beginning of this program. I know. Dude. Okay. Well, you know, we'll get around to you for a second. In a second. Let's, let's introduce Deacon. What's going on, Deacon? How Good are you? Good evening. Thanks for having me. You two, I want to get into the, this union of oh. Deacon and John Ward in a little bit. But I, I, John, back to you. First of all, welcome back to just the, the whole media scene. Good to be here. It's Good wonderful to, be. to have you out. Uh, the last time you were in this studio, yes, I was. I could barely keep my eyes open because the night it was Halloween night. You were here for Halloween, <clears throat> and the night before, I had taken too much off of a THC oh, edible. Oh, that is right. And I spent the entire <laughs> the entire evening, the night before, in the throes of a panic attack. And I, it, it, So when I was here with you that last time. I remember that was a one hell. Uh, I was delirious at that point. There's been some good experiences here. Before I forget, am I on a screen here? Yes. I have a gift for you, Frank. For me? I always come with gifts for you. You know that. This is a homemade bottle of blackberry wine. That's right. Oh, I didn't know that, that was from me. I thought you were just going to talk about how you made blackberry no, wine. No, I'm giving it to you. Well, no, if dude. you're going to, are you going to drink it? Oh, well, eventually. I'll try it. We it's, can we can pop open tonight so if you want. And uh, the deacon has had this wine. Ah. And I'm going to pass it to him so he can pass it to you. If that's it's another possible. chateau. Can we, that, can we, can we connect <laughs> oh, that around the corner? Another chateau. What well, did they say in the office? Well, yeah, he, he, it was like another chateau. He, uh, Toby <laughs> said. So, so John, where are you? Is this going to be? Do you? Is this no. something that you're doing? No, no. This is just a special batch. I'm promoting it because I have nothing, none of it to offer. So there's like no way to take any advantage of it whatsoever. So I was like, well, that'd be a great promotion. You know what's funny? I saw those stickers. I that sticker I stuck on there. So those are on the the site. They're not magnets. Can it, you're not syndicated, right? I can fucking yeah, you say, can whatever say whatever I want. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, they are not magnets. Sorry. <laughs> How are you going to stick a magnet to a uh, glass bottle? No, anyway? Well, so, uh, you know, on a car. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's what I thought it was. A wrap. But it is a sticker. Um, you know, it's funny because... Don't put them anywhere illegal. You, you give this, this bottle of wine to me, and this is what I thought... The, the kinds of things I thought you were doing in those three years that you were just not on the Bre- radar. Brewing wine. Bre- just doing something. I don't know. I actually had this image in my head of you, like, uh, smashing rocks in a quarry. You're like, oh, you know, like at the beginning of, uh, of Total Recall when, when Schwarzenegger. Oh, okay. You know, it's his white, and he's being handled, and his memory's been wiped. Very faithful film adaptation, if I may say so. Yes, well, I haven't seen the new one. <laughs> no, I mean, never mind. An oh. obscure joke about the book. Oh, okay. I mean, okay, okay. so that's, that guy would, was not an Arnold Schwarzenegger type character is my point. 
Oh, no, oh. I was not uh, smashing rocks together in a futuristic prison that I then hacked with my, I think, Hispanic friend. Who's his sidekick in that movie? In Total Recall? In Total Recall, he doesn't have, he doesn't have, he's a brunette chick. When he, and he escapes at the very beginning. <laughs> There's some bro, no, you no, know, no. his friend that can, then gets killed and is like, keep going. No, no. I'm in, assuming in, that happened. He had, he was shacked up with Sharon Stone. Right? She turned on him in the beginning of the movie. Because she was a handler. You remember he he yeah, all, but he's yes, talking about yes he she was a handler at the beginning of the he movie, had a couple yes. of handlers his friend yes. at work was a handler yes. as well he's talking about the one he met the whorehouse I don't know what I'm talking about no <laughs> no that's when he went back to Mars but but when when total the, re I'm thinking of the wrong movie is what it is be. I'm thinking of the fucking Running Man oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I am thinking of the that, fucking yep. Running Man Segway what oh I thought. <laughs> that's what I thought. Uh, what was the initial question back forty-five minutes ago? Oh no, that's just it. I just I, I thought I thought you would be throwing yourself into more you know like uh, I don't know uh, natural projects that pursuits uh, to, I, to some degree. Because where did you go? Is, is it just you wanted to? I cannot fucking believe you had the balls to even ask me. Something <laughs> well, like that. Well, I'm just saying, like, well, like what? It, was it just like, all right, we we need to take this in a new direction, and I'm just gonna lay low until I figure out what it is. I I okay. So a uh, uh, kind of straightforward answer, uh, which I've I don't know if you caught any of the mezzanine in the past six months, but our kind of the deacon and, I, and I's sort of resurrection, if you will, return to the field was based around. Um, what is the problem? I helped to bring him back to you folks. He definitely did. But I, I, I just felt like there actually like wasn't really a good answer for that. I think there is now. Of what the problem is? Well, yeah, so I know it's kind of a, a stupid fucking fruity way to ask a question, and I get that, and everybody that has that reaction of blah, 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 fine, whatever. But answer me then, what is the problem? And you and you start trying to say what it is, and you'll very quickly realize if you haven't already that it's everything and nothing and ten things and one thing and fucking you know yeah holy shit what is the fucking problem? So I spent some time thinking about that. Like it, n no solutions were really happening. I think because nobody really fucking backed up and like, what fucking problem am, am I trying to solve right now? Um, other than. I think for a lot of people, present company excluded, I mean that honestly, like it's just a job and or they see a way to make money off of passionate people. Politics is, mm. you know, one of those fields. Um, but I, number one, I, I actually feel good about the fact I don't think anyone else can say that they had a channel like mine and just fucking stopped. I can't believe that. So you, listen, I, the, the fact one thing, there's no question mark about what, what I'm motivated by. <laughs> Right. Or at least what I'm not motivated by. Um, it was never about that. And it it became, I don't want to say circle jerk, but to a degree. And I mean, there needs to be a bit of circling the wagoning, wagons in tough times. Right? So that's something different. But but then you're three weeks into your circled wagons and you're like, what the fuck, the fucking, there's nothing. What are we doing? And that's kind of how it started to feel to me. I felt like there's some pretty complicated ideas involved in all there's some very smart people like putin is the most obvious example right now but um and so in order to talk about what the problem is there's there's like a lot of just extra fucking work and most people aren't going to want to do that right so and a lot of people are tuning out now to that just to just mm -hmm. at least well it will not and i'm not saying people are saying i hey lady, listen i I want to. I want to take the blue pill. I want to go back into the matrix. But I know a lot of people who are just. It's almost like crop rotation. They're taking month, the weeks, months off. I got to stay away from this. I know. I know the time of day it is. I know what we're up against. But you know what? Uh, at, the, at the same time, a human life is very, very short. And right. The days you mm. give to that are right. the days mm. you don't get back. I think yeah. that's so. There's. Um, that's part of asking what is the problem. It's like, what, who, you know, who am I? Where did I come from? What do I want out of like, what am I spending my time doing? Is there any value in it? Um, do I care about future generations being able to like, you know, do I even give a shit anymore? I, I personally do, but you ask yourself these kinds of questions. It seems like the older generations sometimes, 
didn't give a shit or maybe more just that like nobody fucking really thought about any of this and and it's just been kind of on autopilot Mm. but but that's really what it felt like like we were going very aggressively in a in a in a direction for no fucking reason at all and so i sort of jumped out of that car uh that doesn't mean i stopped thinking about it or doing stuff um here we are today having filmed the beginning of hopefully well definitely a feature film we're not sure what that film will look like at the end of it but it was a good experience i think it went well i loved it yeah Yeah. i was yeah so we'll have some footage from that you and i have talked out outside of uh, i don't mean to go on this such a long monologue at the beginning here but since i'm halfway there let me finish the thought if that's cool no no, Uh, no, listen yeah get it all out because nobody's seen you for years yeah yeah there is no um you can't like write a book and and get it in front of an audience if you're like us. You can't make a movie and and get it in front of an audience the same way. But also So what has started to happen is there's conservative documentaries. Right? Yes. That is kind of how it starts. That Obviously, they have come to the same conclusion that I have, which is there's this information we're trying to get to people and the way we're doing it is not working. It needs better packaging. This isn't a revolutionary idea. Better packaging. Prettier box. Put it in a prettier box. And then if you just take that idea to the to the, the logical end of, of doing that, I mean, that's propaganda. That's what Hollywood is making. It's not, or at least used to not be, so overtly political. It was more like a regular movie in which subversive political things could be said. Right. And so there's no reason you can't make a movie that subversive is the wrong word, in my opinion, but, you know, subverts it right on the fuck back. While being an interesting and fun movie to watch for anybody, uh, that it can be, you know, uh, a comedy horror thriller on one level and social commentary on another, I guess. Well, y- y- let me let me throw this at you. I had just seen this thread. There's been a couple like this before. And um, even this week when I bring... I'm going to have a conversation with uh, Raw Egg Nationalist again. Um, I wanted to talk to him about this Pulp Fiction contest that he had started. He wanted people to to submit different types of uh, Pulp Fiction, either shorts or or any kind of Pulp Fiction art, things like that. I, you know, my friend uh, 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 George Alexopoulos is, is doing the Badlands uh, graphic novels with Razor Fist, and that kind of stuff is what I'm really paying attention to right now. And a lot of people have been... So when you said that you were getting into film, I said, dude, please just, just write me a role. Let me know how I can contribute. This is this is what I want to start doing. But there was a lot of threads that come out recently. One of them from Alaric the Barbarian and a few others. Here's one. He said... Um, uh, he, he was retweeting somebody from back in January that said, Culture requires commitment, focus, and dedication. It's a punishing struggle to improve something, and you can only do it if you believe you can, you must, or that it's worth to even try, um, even if you can't. Uh, the right, the right, right wing, so-called, hiding underneath all of their aggression is fundamentally populated by people who fear that they're not smart or talented enough to do anything great, so they de- uh, denigrate and dismiss it. That's why they obsess over politics. I, I don't know how far I go with that one, but the obsession over politics is huge there too because then here he says to be clear obsessing over politics is midwit activity the hard truth is that they're probably right but that's not their sin their sin is that they lack the courage to try a lefty city like portland is filled to the brim with crappy artists and musicians say what you will about them but they don't lack at least that basic degree of courage now alaric went and retweeted this and said it's true the right doesn't produce much in the way of good culture. This is changing, but only very slowly. Making culture, media, literature, etc. requires personal vulnerability, something that much of the right doesn't like, so we end up with soulless political slop. And, uh, I mean... I, 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 don't, think, I don't know that I agree with that. I, I think there are, there's a lot more people trying, I think, than, than that, but... Well... What do you think about this? I mean, there's a bunch of different autistic ways you can slice that, but number one is nobody, period, succeeds successfully in, in, at a high level in film. I mean, it's a very exclusive club, statistically, left or right. Most people aren't rock stars. Most people aren't famous directors. Most people aren't A-list actors, period. Um, and then from that, especially with actors, is 
what they say they are and what they actually are are not the same fucking thing. So, so somebody that said, I mean, like, you know, Clint Eastwood says he's conservative, I think, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe he is. Maybe he's not. He's a fucking actor. Um, and I mean, by the way, that's what actors mostly get paid for is the acting they're doing. Not in the movie, right? Promotion? Propaganda? Anyway. Um, I don't know also that people haven't tried. Maybe not. Maybe now there's not much, but I mean, I think a lot of people tried and were censored or prevented or, you know, um, and it got more and more, more obvious. Um, it is rational at this point to not try certain things if you're openly political on the wrong side. But beyond all of that, I don't really like this whole, like, I, I, I would call myself a conservative using the language of, you know, this show and, and, and the niche that we're in. But, like, that certainly is not what I am um, in the way that most people understand it. I would say I'm on the right, but that's not how I, like, think of myself. Um, You're not in a minority, I don't think. Right. No, I know. And I think it's it's maybe the courage we need is more to, like, say that kind of stuff out loud. Um I actually think, I mean, I think people are very stupid, and but also very smart at the same time. It's more about how you catch their attention. If you can get somebody to pay attention, like if they give a shit. Like, for example, I know many people who know tons of encyclopedic levels of knowledge about sports, like fucking football and basketball, and then they can't do math. It's because they care about sports, not because they're stupid, like, they know shit I'll never know about sports. And I'll know shit. It, you are going to be knowledgeable, skilled, and an expert at what you like doing. Just That's just how it works. That's not like fucking magic. Yeah. Um, and so, a lot of people that liked doing the kind of stuff that Hollywood didn't want to... I mean, I think they were trying. They just wasn't getting made. I don't, I don't think you can right away say that nobody, nobody was trying. Uh, and I don't know that I'd say it's fear, or at least not more so than a leftist is afraid to, ha you know, take a shot. Um, I think it's that when, when, I think people are conflating the term right or right wing or conservative with like open and honest thinker. Uh, at this point, so yeah. that to me is the group I want to be in. It's like not so much left or right, but like who is sitting here and being like, all right, number one, something ain't right. Can we agree on, like, what is the fucking statement we can agree on and start from? And it's, I mean, I think it's that. Some, there's a problem. Uh, okay, he, he, here's what I'll say. And, and here's what I'll, th I'll throw into this. And then I want to, I would definitely want to introduce Deacon. Yeah, get this see, see what's going on oh, there. Geez. And then we can draw the rest of the room in again. Um, but this is a wonderful way to lay the foundation. What I would uh, throw out for consideration there, too, is without <laughs> taking uh, political affiliations and alignments into consideration... That there is a uh, we have we have we are a culture now with an intimacy problem. There, Fair. there is no we don't have there's no intimacy in our society. Uh, so, for example, everything comes packaged in a way to try to rope as many people into smaller mantra-like ways of thinking and feeling about something instead of giving somebody something that that's personal that makes you think. That actually, even though you might be watching a show like this in an audience of many thousands, it still feels as individual an experience as possible, and it uh, and it and it makes you focus on yourself and do not. You, a do you believe the end use the consumer is responsible in any way for that happening? Like, or do you think that's totally? I'm not saying, but like, do you think? I mean, nothing exists without without a a, a market. So you and I make content, uh -huh. right? Um, do you find that people miss the point you're making sometimes in like frustrating ways? Uh, I mean, I do. I, I, yeah, only because I'm, we're dealing with large numbers of people. I guess. Um, there's always that. So w when you, you you talk about subdivisions and whatever, but there, what I do see is that at least my core audience, they love the variety. They love the idea that, yeah, we, we, keep, we, we keep one foot into the world that's going on around us just to keep tabs of how the chess pieces are being placed around. Sure. Um, but it, and, and perhaps to even take that into consideration with our own personal planning for what's coming for us in the future. Sure. But other than that, I think that um, there is so much burnout, and we did a show on that recently too, 
it has to be on both left and right. But I, I feel like left, this, this you know, ravenous, rabid, drooling group of, I don't know, crusaders right now, uh, very, very religious zealots mm -hmm. in, in their own right. Um, the, I feel like the only thing that they really care about is 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 the gripe and 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 to and then it creates a mirror image on the other side that you have to fight against because of course the whole point there you can't become the the thing that you you want to um you want to get rid of or you want to see less of the left has already become that and now it's really a matter of not getting dragged into a black hole by a small group of squeaky wheels because i still don't believe that they are a very big majority they just have all of the greatest ways of projecting majority, right. as you're taking, talking about before, right. movies, right. Uh, television. Mm -hmm. It's a projection. So it's yeah, a, they amplify themselves much. Like, yeah, it's a it's a fucking you know an animal that puffs itself up, but, to look but bigger. That's what I'm saying, man. I I think that that's why what you're doing and this direction is a is a very very refreshing thing, and it's going to happen more and more, especially with all this. We got to talk about the AI stuff later on because that that'll affect filmmakers like you in in the coming months it, it, every week there's something crazy that comes out deacon <laughs> good evening <laughs> you uh, you uh, when when john came back into the into the fray and i was like yeah it was almost like that scene from hook pans back everybody's <laughs> everybody's running around <laughs> you know the lost boys are screaming hook. yeah yeah man yeah. but but there you were there you were. There, there. There's John and Just Deacon. Out of nowhere. So, where, where did you guys? Where, how long have you guys known each other? And oh, and uh, oh, and yeah. Go ahead, start with that. Probably about eight months, going on a year now. Yeah. Don't say too fucking much. Anyhow, um, no, we started to work together. Um, got to talking, and realized that for a younger guy, that he has a lot of the same views I had. Um, we when we spoke, we spoke a lot. A lot of the same words come out of our mouth about what is the problem what's going on and every day it was something different and I just started to kind of I every day I'd vent to him every day I'd vent to him you know about whatever whatever was in the news cycle whatever was tripping me up that day I'd vent to him he's like we got to do this he took me up showed me this studio invited me in and so you're who we should thank uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> because he wanted, he kept saying, I want to do this. This is something I want to do. I've been wanting to get back into it. I've been looking for somebody like you that has the views, that has the voice, just out of nowhere. And that's what happened, out of nowhere. You know, your presence in, in the broadcast, in the mezzanine broadcast, you're doing all that other stuff, though, There's because John's got a very distinct brand, yes, especially the yes. way he delivers his yep, stuff. Yep. But but you come in, and it's, again, there is that intimacy and that authenticity kind of right. stuff. Yeah. And yeah. so w where did Deacon yeah. come from with the name? Um, because I do a prayer every morning, every Sunday morning of our show. I do. I start the show off with a prayer. After our introduction, I do a prayer every day, and it just kind of stuck. So that's where that came from was the deacon. This that I am the he's, I he's do the, the prayer. Oh my mind's like, he's the deacon Johnny Mojack, and I that was confusing for me. That's part of it. <laughs> so, okay. But the prayer was totally hit. That is a true story. That was yeah. Yeah. I said, well, what do you think about a prayer? How do you think the people would feel we if we started a, off you know, every show Sunday with just morning. a prayer? Right, yeah. Just a simple nothing out of a out of a Bible or nothing like just a simple hey. Let's bow our heads in prayer today. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Bless each and every one of us, you know, and look out for whatever's going on that day and end it with an amen. They loved it. He said they absolutely loved that. It, and that's honestly, been at this point this year. For and, sure. You see, I missed I missed I missed little details like that because I, I do drop in on those shows. But it's a, I, it, yeah, you're not missing a lot yet. But so it, I, I no, thought that this was no. a, a, a name that you carried around with you for a long time. No, this is not even a year old. No, no, this is all a whole new branding thing for me. I'm all new to this. <laughs> I am all new to this. This okay? motherfucker's new to electricity, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I live back in the boonies. Um, and I do mean back in the boonies. I'm not going to lie to you, back in the boonies. But he gives me... When he asked me to do the show, I thought this is the way for me to vent. This is the way to, for me to get out the things I have inside about what's going on politically, what's going on, what's wrong with the country, what's wrong with people that are running the country and so forth. He gives me that avenue to open up and, and, and give me a chance to vent and find out what other people 
who think like we do have a lot in common with what we are and who yeah. we are and just try to connect with people and that's all that's all i wanted to do i think i think like he like you said it's he's he's an like an open and all like you, it's unusual to meet somebody who's just straightforward with you yeah for better or worse um uh, not it's either you don't get that or you get it like over the top and then that's an equal and different kind of pretending that people do but yeah it was just pretty much and he's the same way i mean he's exactly yeah he tell me exactly what you know uh, well, i don't agree with that okay well let's you, hash this out and let's look at it from each other's well, it's like angles. you were saying with you nailed it with intimacy okay yes, and yes it's, that's it's, the biggest word right there i know uh nobody our age listens to guys his age and vice versa and so it was just kind of this like thing where instead of giving a shit about what you look or sound like or how old you are it's like i'm gonna listen to the words you're saying and wow what a surprise well i agree with what let's yeah fucking this is yeah like you, you picked created the, energy is you picked the good you picked the uh, matt what did you did you uh have you been watching it? And there's, I know you were one of the first people to say, "Yo, man, I don't, John Ward." I, I don't catch everyone, but yeah, I do. Man, it's I, weird. Sometimes I, same with like all your stuff. With your stuff too. I'll, sometimes I'll get a notification that a new <laughs> video was made, and sometimes I won't. Well, John, what did you have to do? Is all of your old content? Did you delete it? It is not deleted. You, if you're worried it's about it, it's actually you still out there. Really? Yeah. On like a whole platform, it's not that hard to find. But not on YouTube. Not on YouTube. Okay, good. I was gonna say because I just wonder, I I have survivor's guilt some some days about how I even have a YouTube channel among all the cha all the I places do, that I stream. I do but. like wonder why. So I kind of played a game with it there at the end before stopping of like what button can I press and what button can't I press? You know. Yeah. And you've probably done some of that too. I'm sure. Yeah. When he a any Zionism show is it? <laughs> I, I I could what you know you you hear of people and this comes from a guy back in the boonies you hear of people like you guys being successful podcast YouTubers and that kind of stuff I'd never met one when he asked me when he told me and asked me to you know about the show and everything I did some homework and he gave me his link and I went in there and looked it's like wow wow you know like wow this guy's for real I mean and then. Here, check this video out. And I'd watch this. Like, oh my God, this guy's talented, man. He's coming up with all kind of crazy shit. My grandson loves this guy. My grandson would go ape shit at a place like this. I mean, that boy is chomping at the bit to get into the industry like this and stuff. And we had him over, and and that's he's given me an opportunity to open something up to a young person. It is cool how it kind of. And it's just, I mean, yeah, we've really hit roll. it off. Not only just as friends, but as the show goes on. You know, we learn more about each other, and he's asked my grandson to come in and sit in and stuff. And yeah, it's working out pretty good. I like that. That's really that's, that's, that's Anthony. Do you think you have anything on this uh, so far? I mean, I mean, you you create, you're on the musical end of things. Um, so I mean, it, it just as far as new media and and doing things that uh, the industry does not really prioritize anymore, and and doing it your own way. Uh, don't don't yeah. What do you think? I mean, I'm just listening. I, you, I might be the wrong person to ask since I, you know, lately I just take rap songs and do them in the style of Eddie Vedder. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, that, but that's what I'm talking about. You, you know, there's a lot. That is an example of what people seek out when they, they, they want to have a break. Right. Yeah. Like, I'm um, one. I'm I, one. Whenever you guys turn me on, his, I was like, oh, my God, check it out. I got to go through. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it's great to see original. The Deacon original is a big stuff Anthony like fan. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I love to see the original stuff, and you're right. The more original it can be, the better off that, you know, you hit different people throughout doing that kind of original stuff. I try to just play around, like, you know, play with people. Like, uh, <laughs> that came out wrong. Um, <laughs> no, but you know, like, there's, I'm doing a lot more audience uh, uh, interaction now. So if somebody has an idea. Can I, can I ask, do you, do you find that, like, because you want to? Like, a actually, yes. Right? Now, okay. Now yeah, it is, so I didn't now mean to cut you off, but I was curious. You know what? I can say yes now, but there, I had to go through a period. I'm doing this 10 years. I've been doing this for 10 years in March of this year, March 15th, 
this year it'll be 10 years that my channel has been on YouTube uh, 10 years that I've been under the name 10 second songs and I had any kind of uh, success on the internet and I went through a lot of different phases and I've, I've experienced the burnout I've experienced the phases of my life where I wanted to change everything I changed the, my name I, I did this I, I didn't want to be known as this I got sick of it because you do the same thing over and over again it's it's you know it, it wears on you but now it's like I've I kind of I went and I did some other things I, I started to kind of just throw things uh, throw things out that were just silly and shit that I wanted to do and I kind of come full circle because uh, you know I, f I found the joy in doing it just for fun because I don't have any expert it's like I'm I'm rediscovering why I'm doing things now and it's really just just because like hey you know what uh, I think that one of the things that I, I struggled with was um, thinking thinking I was supposed to be something I wasn't you know I struggled with like oh uh, at this point I should be my own artist and like you know selling out Madison Square Garden with my own songs or something like that and you know what that's uh, I mean, who knows like you never know what could happen in right, the future sure. right but I it, I it was sucking the fun out of everything it's like y instead of just allowing myself to just play to just play to just have a good time which is like how you make the good shit in the first place right when right you, right mm -hmm. so yeah and that's and that's it like you know when I I I take a lot of um, weird challenges and suggestions from people in comments and comments and all that stuff. That's, that's Did you I see do. Anthony's recent Itsy Bitsy Spider? Uh, no. no. I started doing nursery rhymes in different metal styles. <laughs> awesome. Let me like, tell you something. Aunt, awesome. my, my daughter awesome. my daughter loves this. I said, Aunt, Aunt you've oh got... God, uh, yeah. Please, you got to do more of these. You have no clue. Because now... Um, here, take it. Hold on. Here, there, here's Anthony's uh, most recent. Let me hold on. Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. Well, it's it's itsy bitsy spider in, in the style of System of a Down. Oh yeah, it's all. We should have said that. It's itsy bitsy spider in the style of System of a Down, which I think that. Uh, hold on. Fucking good, I that is that is awesome. <laughs> like so good, yeah. That's yeah. just fucking crazy. It's, especially if you're a, a, a Sode fan, you know. Uh, you, uh -huh. and, and, and this is how parents are are, uh, are sharing System of a Down with their three year olds. Excellent. Until they're excellent. ready. Until they're ready. Uh, that's great. That's excellent, man. <laughs> until they're ready for Toxicity album for real. <laughs> My gosh. Okay. Well, I love that. That's great. So, I mean, yeah. hey, but well, some thanks. of the best things that have ever been any any music, any art, anything has been done out of the pure joy yeah. of doing it. So if you're at that point of doing it, and you're at that point now. Yeah. Well, the other thing is you, you have to be in that state to to make anything uh worth anybody's time including your own time exactly because, like you're not going to make anything good if you're just like you know you're in a fucked up state of mind i well no I, well actually no there're plenty of good great art that's made in some of the worst states of mind but i mean like if your intention is more so like um you put out like you're trying too hard you're mm -hmm. trying to do mm -hmm. something you're trying to maybe uh uh your intentions are to get chase clout 
your your intentions are to stay relevant, whatever the hell that even means. I don't even think that's uh, staying relevant now in, in the internet age is just such a stupid uh, thought anyway because mm. there's just so much yeah. going on. People can yeah. watch whatever the hell they want. I know. You're yeah. just better off. Better off having you know, fun. Having I mean, fun I mean working. That, that's it. You can tell. You can tell when somebody's on something. You know, and I'm not talking about drugs. You can tell when somebody's just on something. Hey, let, let me. Well, <sighs> what I guess what it all comes down to the first uh, 35 minutes of this is that um, it's great to have you back, and it's good to see you doing something. You can tell that there's some good energy behind it, because for especially for me personally, because I'm going to personalize this for a second. For about three and a half years or so, John, <laughs> I was oh, I was the John Ward crisis hotline. I heard this story earlier. <laughs> I had people. I don't know why. I had a, I was getting emails every couple of weeks. I don't know why though, but Frank, that is, sucks. Is, Let me be the first to say that sucks. Is John, wh wh where's John Ward been? Is he okay? Everybody, <laughs> and I didn't even know what this because again, in my head, I'm seeing you breaking rocks in a quarry, <laughs> you know, trying not to remember your time in Mars, and um, so that's just a, it's good. I was Let, chappelling, homie. I know. Yeah, well, you went to Africa. You did the whole bit. Literally, see my ancestors. Uh, let me let me throw this out to you guys. This is a completely different topic. Uh, this was tweeted out. I don't know, a few months ago. I actually know it was last year. And it was just sent to me because it is a really interesting thought. This was from a Twitter account, Zephyr on Call. Said, how is it in 2023, it, how is it it's 2023 and nobody's come up with a satisfying explanation as to why cell phones never show up in our dreams if we're using them for 12 hours a day? Do you ever dream wow. of a cell phone or any yeah. kind of using it in your dream does that ever show no, up? no i can honestly say no because i don't think it has for me either everything at work work has showed up in a dream Cash no i don't think i can i can honestly say i don't think i've ever have other ever. types of phones showed up in your dreams uh yes yes actually. i've spoken what about kind? using a what phone. kind of phone has showed up the, the 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 only time i can tell you that i've heard <laughs> no there's been other times i feel like i've heard like people's voices calling to me through phones but they'd always been landlines the first time i remember this was in 1997 right before my gr our grandmother died i got i was in my grandparents apartment and when anthony and i were growing up my grandmother and grandfather my my mother's side uh they still for some time they had the two-part phones you know the little like the mm -hmm. daffodil yeah. phones yeah one up you hold you hold the yeah. receiver sure. so we wow. were making all of our first calls of our lives on that rotary phone holding it like this well, by the time, I think it was by the time uh, my my grandmother was really sick, I got a, I had a dream that we were in my grandparents' apartment and uh, that the phone rang, the old phone that had already been gone for years at that point in 1997. And it was my grandfather and my grandmother calling me saying, hey, come, come, come over, come, come see your grandmother. Just like calling me to go see my grandmother. Now, at that point, I'm in seventh grade, Anthony's in fifth grade. So oh, there's not much we can do on our own. But we did go see her, and she was in a coma at that point. She died very shortly afterwards. So it was very weird. That's the first time I ever had a phone in my dreams. Mm. It was a dream to come call to call, come see my grandmother before she died. And it was the old phone. It, but it's never been new technology. Uh, it's never been it's never been a cell phone now yeah. that they think about it. Yeah, you, because there's Have a, you had other like laptops and shit in dreams? Nope. I mean like like Deacon said, if I worked when I was working at CVS pharmacy or any place where I had to use a cash register, I would have cash register nightmares. Oh, yeah, sure. You know, I'd be scanning things in my sleep. Yeah. But I don't know. Actually, I've dreamt of I've dreamt of cell phones. You have? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like getting getting a text while someone's talking to me. Stuff like that, yeah. So maybe it's the maybe there there's a rule, and then there are the exceptions. You can call it on that if you want, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the line, Frank. Mm -hmm. If I'm dreaming and I dream of a cell phone, can I call you on it? Yeah. All right. Cool. D Thanks. Dude, if Fun I get a call, if I get, that's some weird shit. But I'll tell you something. I bet you. What if you get a fucking call on your show and it's me and I'm like, dude, I, I'm dreaming and it and I call it and it's fucking. If you, you gonna believe it? If you called me at eight fifteen p.m., at, you know I'm just the the lines are open, and I get a call from you, 
and it's you calling me from a dream state, <laughs> and I can get somebody. If I can get, if Deacon can say, <laughs> call, you got his number now. Call, yeah. Have to yeah. Verify. Deacon yeah. calls me back like ten minutes later. Frank, <laughs> I his he's unconscious. I swear to God, he did not. He, he, uh, oh shit! I, I mean, I I would just I would believe it if I had some confirmation. <laughs> I ever see, it's like that scene in um, Lost Highway. Oh yeah. You know, Tyler, the weird looking dude with, with the, the cell phone. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. I'm at your house right we're gonna have now. To film that now. We're gonna have to do something like that. Man, Matt, uh, Matt, do you ever have dreams? I had a dream. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, had a dream. <laughs> like, period. No, because some people don't dream. Some people just they just go out for nine hours. That's not, you want I used the... to dream every night, but nah, I don't dream a lot anymore. You're lucky. I rem- yeah, nah. I've lucid dreamed a uh, bunch of times. Really? Yeah. And, 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 and that just happens, or do you do the thing? Does you it help? Oh, there was a thing I had to do before. Oh, okay. Okay, I get you. <laughs> I, no, I, I'm just saying, you know, I uh, some people say that when they're in the dream, they find their hands, and all of a sudden they become... Oh, no, so, I flew in a dream. You're, you're, I flew in one dream. I remember, like, I, I, I knew I could fly in my dream, and I fucking flew. That's a re- uh, recurring dream for me is, uh, like, leaping. I do, I do a lot of like I, I, I swim in air like I, I, I go I, f- and I, I float I, yeah I float a I lot can, in I my dreams just, I too I can like levitate I can, I can like just leap far distances just the hell I've never repair. done that but I've levitated in <laughs> yeah I don't know if I think this might be like a local plumbing issue <laughs> not more than a, <laughs> yeah then we have problems more than a dreamscape <laughs> mythos <laughs> issue oh no, yeah now we have some issues over here we do. We really do. You want to talk about knowing what the hell the problem is. We had living in a place like um in our state part of New York. I mean, if you go up to the Adirondacks or Western New York, oh, it's beautiful. Gorgeous. Then, then it's you beautiful, might as yeah. you might as well be yeah. in any rural area mm-hmm. in the yeah. country. Yeah. The values are the same, the the tempo is the same. It's just that we are still within a stone's throw of Mordor. You know, I mean, that's that is uh, that's essentially what's going on down in New York City, and that doesn't mean it's a monolithic group of people down there who like what's going on. Right. It is just, it's a. What is the vibe? Yeah, I was gonna say it's been a while since I've been over there. Honestly, I mean, like, city? I haven't been down there. Uh, Not much. The city, the, uh, in my experience, and I go down pretty, um, pretty frequent. Um. I haven't seen anything. I haven't seen. Actually, I surprisingly, it's less congested. Um, there, there are days where I'm surprised that there's no traffic. Really? Going, going there. Um, and then when there is traffic, it's not as bad as uh, you know, as like you'll see on the news or what you would think it is. Hmm. I, I haven't seen. I, now, on the other hand, people who live there, they see stuff with homeless and violence and blah 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 you know that but you're dipping in dipping out i'm i'm like i okay i don't use the i don't use the train i don't use the subways i drive everywhere i drive i go i go into a parking garage i go you know get something to eat get a drink or something i go to a, a concert venue i go home you know like so my experience is not you know, like maybe maybe my experience isn't. Um, yeah, you you have a lot more of a controlled experience. Right. It's a it's a controlled, no doubt about it. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's. Uh, There's yeah. homeless people in Porchester, bro. It's more and more now. They just all live in the same spot under a bridge right before the entrance of my job. Yeah, Dirty Mike and the boys. Are you saying they have a home? They it, have tents that's and a good like point. little. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm with you there, Mr. Ward. Unless, uh, <laughs> uh, unless, is that? I mean, I, I got you there. Does, did, do they call Winner. it? Winner. Is it something different up here than what it is back home? Or what do you call them down there? Vagrants? <laughs> <laughs> no, there's actually, there was in Altoona, there was when I worked at the rail shop up there at night, we go out back to the smoking area. Altoona. And across the street. There was always a homeless that slept underneath the bridge over there. A homeless. Did you hear that? Just he one was single homeless. homeless. There was always, one, homeless. There was always a yeah. homeless. He was homeless. He, he was, was homeless. one of them homeless. 
<laughs> I guess that's what we call them. Homeless, yeah. But, but homeless, they got tents homeless, and everything. Homeless, but you also I mean, dehumanize all them in a just that little community, bit. Hey, then that's the, I don't know. <laughs> hey, homeless, how are you today? Uh, well, I was homeless. Don't get, most of don't us get put it. the word person at the end, if well, you're wondering. Homeless. I guess it's just a matter if you if you have a mailing address or not. I, I have to have to imagine because I, I I still if you're living out of a car it's yeah. pretty much homeless. Um, if you're living under a bridge, you're homeless. You're homeless. You I can't. I wasn't that. I wasn't trying to make. That. I know where you. No, were I know what you. I know you. <laughs> come on, guys. But if you take, if you say, hey, you want to come by, hang out at my place, and you bring them to the underpass at I ninety five, you can't do that. <laughs> you know. Yep. That's fair. That's <laughs> fair. Like, if you wouldn't send your, like, kid there after school for a few hours to hang out with his friend, then it's Dang probably out. not a home. You might be homeless. Anyway, okay, Jesus. so what we're going to do is when we come back, you know, before we go on a quick break, we'll come back and start opening up the lines. I want everybody to call in uh, 914-914-200-0269. There we are right there, 914-200-0269. You're going to call in, say whatever the hell you want. John Ward's here. De the Deacon's here. Anthony, Matt, we're just having a good time, and um, and we'll uh, we'll stretch this one out for as long as we can. Um, yeah, actually, let's do that right now. Start your phones up, ladies and gentlemen. 914-200-0269. We will be back in a very, very brief moment. Cute little dog you've got there. But hold on. In a previous life, he could have been George Washington. Nice cat. Perhaps Annie Oakley? And look at him. Why, it's Napoleon. Reincarnation. What human being was your pet in a previous lifetime? Master reincarnationist E. David Scott will tell you when you call this number. Just answer simple questions with your touch-tone phone. $1.95 per minute for entertainment only. Under 18, get permission. Call now. Learn who your pet was as a human in a previous lifetime. I'm telling these son of a bitches that we respect the Japanese of this country who are honest businessmen. And yeah, this is the land of opportunity for legitimate business, not for death merchants who distribute drugs to our children through schools and on the streets. Now I'm telling these motherfuckers that if they continue killing our children to make their precious millions that they deposit in their secret Swiss bank accounts, Counselor, before your lawsuit even gets off the court clerk's desk, I'll have their stinking bodies in garbage bags and ship them back to Japan for fertilizer. The glass was just in the small pocket. I guess it's just gonna be the two of us. We seriously lucked out with good weather this weekend. Here, let me pack you a little Scooby snack. Shit's purple. Super sticky. It's crazy to think we're just a small speck. Oh. Holy shit. There was a meteor that just cut through Perseus straight into Draco's tail. I thought it was gonna hit Earth. <laughs> Who are we listening to? Delicate Steve. Delicate Steve? Yeah. Sire? Then I hear somebody say Scooby Snacks. <laughs> we got a live one. Right, let's get this show on the road. 914-200-0269. We got the we got the group we got the squad together tonight just for a fun time. Squad. Ah. Oh, not that kind of a squad. I'm sorry. You see, there you go. There's the there's the the poisoning of just the, the public. We can't use words like squad anymore. Oh. What triggered me? Triggered. Oh. Is terrible. Got uh, a cat. Problematic. Cat. We got a cat right Oh yeah, she's making here. the rounds now. Yep. She's gonna hang out. Yeah, she's very spoiled. All right. 
Okay, well, you can also send in a super chat and have it read on air. 914-200-0269 is the call in line, though. Jay Britt says, hey, Frank, what a great gathering. Awesome show. Well, thank you so much for being out there. Yes, indeed. Uh, Boozer, to, uh, Boozer 20 says, a little deeper of a conversation than I was expecting with the title of the show. Uh, well, it's a, what do you mean? It's a, it's a world champion hookah uh, night. Of course. That's, I think, this is championship style conversation. Championship. Yeah. There is a big section on the right that seems to want to cancel people when they cuss or go against their point of view. I don't understand why people seem to get their feelings hurt when someone they listen to don't agree with their way of thinking. I think there may be how easily some can fall into hero worshiping. Um, what do you think about about that? I uh, I agree with it, except I follow everything Donald Trump says. That's right. Just as long as you're not talking about Trump, you're, you, you've you lost man at that point. I don't know. I Yeah, th- th- cursing. Hey, listen, I uh, I still I still curse. I just try to try to curse at the right time. And uh, the, be better at that, too. Yeah, yeah I, I try. I try. I mean, I don't. I'll be honest. <laughs> I don't at yeah. all. I, I I've been a welder for 25 years. I was a truck driver. I mean, I grew up in the shops where men were men, and that's how we talked. And it's really not that extraordinary, yeah. Yeah, I say that like, word a lot. I don't know. Get around the wrong. I people. don't try to. Well, yeah, I guess so. You're pretty polite. Doesn't matter. Yeah, am I? Doesn't matter to me. You're supposed to be. I think no. it's stupid. You're not. Yeah, the whole prudishness on the on the right is a little frustrating well yeah yeah i mean then again i think it's uh, it's only in certain places i i wouldn't say that it's uh it's huge but again you know what else i don't like with them what when the ones that are like against weed and shit because they're like like super into it being against it you used to like, listen to michael savage a, a lot yeah, i know I and he hated he it said that. yeah gotta live a little fucking you know smoke it Smoke it. Give it a shot. Uh, yeah. It's really not that problem. It's not a big problem. No. Well, well, well uh, Deacon, yeah. how long have you, you, you've smoked, you, you smoked back, in, what was the, when's the first time you smoked, like what year? Oh, 1986. Okay. So, I mean. That's the first. Yes, that was probably the first time I smoked. And people who have only been smoking the last 20 years say that they uh, can attest oh, to the yeah, fact that yeah, something is changing out yeah, there. Oh, yeah. Even yeah, when I started yeah, smoking, yeah. it's way better. Yeah, the, way, the weed today, be it whether you get it at a dispensary or you get it from your wherever, it's a lot more potent than what it was back then. And it's a lot cleaner. There's not the stems and seeds, you know, that there used to be and that kind of stuff. I don't know what they did. Yeah, they only had, like, damn. Gamma Red and Maui Wowie back then. Oh, you get some now good skunk like... weed. You got some, you know, the good, I, I mean, if you, when you could smell a skunk <laughs> 10 miles away, you knew somebody had a bag in their pocket because it was just that, you know. <laughs> and nowadays they got, you know, we didn't have names, Purple Whirlpool yeah, and all these regular. crazy It was names. just regular, but yeah, mostly yeah, it, it was million. Panama Red, I think. Yeah. And went from yeah. that to Hydro to all this crazy, man, crazy. Hey, Dean. Crafted stuff. Dean, you're on the air. What's going on, man? Frank. Yes, hey, okay. hey, well, hey. What's up? Can you guys hear me? I can hear you. Go ahead. All right. I just called that E. David Scott guy. It's still a lot. You're talking about the 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 pet the pets in the afterlife thing or the reincarnated pets? Yeah, he told me my cat was Betty Zane, and uh, and and my dog is George Washington. Your dog is George Washington. Yeah. Wait, are you are you joking? Yeah, because because he's a badass with a big heart. I was gonna <laughs> ask how big is this thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. No, that's... I did. I didn't really. I, I obviously, I didn't call it. I just. You know, thought I'd fuck with you guys a little bit. But, no, because uh, you're gonna. I wouldn't be shocked if that line, if those lines are like left open. But that, you know, that takes that takes time. That takes money, and that's a lot. That's a long might, time ago. I might, I might try it just see if it's there. But, uh, but no, man, I love you guys, man. You guys, it's John, uh, Matt, uh, Deacon, Frank. Obviously, had great talk to you guys. Um, big fan. And you know, we you guys brought up you know culture earlier, and and, and all this stuff, and 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 John's uh, you know whole hiatus from you know being online and and whatever. And 
the you know the frustration and but you know what it's it's uh it's a battle and uh you know politics and all that bullshit is downhill from culture and i think that with what, pe- what, what what you guys are doing people like you are bringing the culture back to where it should be i i really do you know even people like me who don't have a huge presence online i i get up and i bust my ass every day and i go to work and i train these young guys you know at work at these you know we've talked about before we're, we're the last generation of people to know what it's like to live without the internet without yeah. a computer in yeah. their pocket yeah absolutely. and these young people these young people don't understand it i'm telling you they don't get it <laughs> they look at me when i say that shit to them i mean i spend hours with these guys and it's and, and we talk and you know i say something like that and uh they're like really i mean what how, how what'd you do <laughs> how how did you do things they they have no clue no nope. nope. you know mm. so you know it's stuff like that it's, it's bringing the culture back to where it should be so you know it's uh we gotta keep our boots on the ground and uh keep her head down and get, just keep pushing forward and uh you know i appreciate what you guys do and uh it's making a difference in the world it really is well, especially in our country well thank you, De- you know? thank you dean thank you for being the first call tonight and and having such yeah, yeah. such great su- stuff to yeah. share man thank you for that well thanks for picking it up frank love you guys and uh have a good rest of the show all good. right take care appreciate take you. take care it's, it's actually just, if I could for a Saturday, did you pick up another call? No, no, go ahead. We'll take, I we mean, have I was, calls. just because he reminded me, there, as I was driving up here, I was having this conversation. It's not just the first or the last people that, that had experienced a non-internet, but what we were talking about on the drive up here is, like, barely, but I do have, like, recipes for a meatball that my great Italian grandmother mm-hmm. made. And, you know something else that somebody in my family did or figured out and that's we are the last generation that's going to have that because the next generation is going to be like my meatball recipe came from google yeah yeah Yeah. i got mine at bing it's the bing family there's going to be like four meatball recipes and they're all going to suck but that's i mean that's the culture that's that's kind of vanished that was kind of a wake up for me driving up here it's like yeah it's not just not the internet but like i had i i did not have the internet but i did have thousands of years probably of oral history Mm -hmm. which is what was there before the internet right that is gone and it's funny you say about driving up one generation and the internet how much did you drive up here with your gps on your phone and in the car today I can remember a time I when I had to drive through <laughs> New York and New Jersey and everything without the use of a GPS or a phone in your pocket. Or was it uphill both ways? Where you had to read Was your grandmother map. on your back? Always. MapQuest. Map, the MapQuest. No, quest I didn't even map. have MapQuest. That back. Sucked. I mean, I can remember and see. I do have a lot of if, respect If for you would you take away that. today's technology, this society, the younger generation would not be able to function beyond 24 hours at all most they people would not either, know what honestly. to do beyond 24 hours i think most without people a phone anything internet hey, Listen, i could do yeah, it i could point. do it because That's, i i grew up without it i know what it is not to have it okay I don't have it anymore. All right, I go back to doing the way that I used to do things before this. It, but you know what? It, it would take. It would. I think that anybody, like you were saying, uh, like Dean was saying, uh, depending on what generation you are and and uh, whether or not you were able to know a life before all of what we're dealing with right now, social media wise. Mm-hmm. Um, Everybody is everything. I mean, from I, you remember when everybody was skeptical about doing banking online. And now it's just like, when was the last time you went to great point to go and actually deposit? Che- I mean, I, I I don't know. I don't remember the last time I deposited a check at a bank. I'm taking pictures of these fucking things all yeah, day. Yeah. You know, things like that. Yeah. I if everything went away, I would remember the way it felt like years ago. Over a good period of time, it would take a big, big adjustment even for me though. But I can see people who never understood that. Like, uh, I, I really appreciated those videos. Speaking of rotary phones before, you mm-hmm. guys see that video? 
not too long ago, maybe like four or five years ago, these parents, they put a rotary phone yeah. in front of their, their, their I did kids it. and said, call grandma. I did it. And they, they it, it looked like the scene out uh -huh. of Zoolander yeah, they where they're holding yeah. the, the computer. Like, how do I get the I files? Have, out of the I have <laughs> I have a rotary phone out in my room, out in the backboard chair where my, my studio Is and stuff's at. And it can be. All the needs is plugged in. And my grandson come up. Now he's 15 now. He come up. I said, here, call home. And he stood there and looked at that and looked at that and he's moving the dial. Now my son knew how to use it, but my grandson had to be shown how to use an old rotary phone. Uh, I, and the, it was crazy. The other night I brought up again with my, my friend Jay who was here, we were talking about uh, one thing or another. And the fact, you know, every once in a while we'll talk about the, the state of the, the world of cursive writing. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I only write mm -hmm. in cursive. But so few people are writing in cursive these days. In, in fact, I, I see many people complaining that teachers will deduct points from people's uh, papers if they sign their name in cursive at the top of their term papers or something. Oh, really? And to the, the, it's getting to the point now where uh, many articles have been written about how in the future they're going to need essentially a new category of scribe to be able to interpret any kind of script writing from the past for people who don't know what the hell they're oh, looking at. Yeah. And I yeah. I read recently too that even major wow. brands like Kellogg or anybody whose brand is just script like Coca-Cola, yeah. they, they're thinking, you know, what do we do in the next 20 years when people won't, looking at the Coca-Cola sign for somebody who's never written in script is gonna look like Egyptian hieroglyph hieroglyphics. Yeah. It probably already does for some people, but they just know recognizable I, I don't know. It's sugar drink. Okay, exactly. Isn't sugar water. Crazy. Hold on. Let's take another call. Uh, 207, you're on the air. Who's this? Hey, this is uh, Biking Viking. Biking Viking. Welcome to the show. Go ahead. This is too cool. Hey, um, <clears throat> so first of all, I got to say, uh, John Ward, you have introduced me to a gold mine. That is, his, his videos have been a joy to watch lately. Thank you very much, sir. Um, Cheers. I was just uh, typing out a comment. I heard you guys talking about, you know, a rotary phone and, and people, you know, just uh, these the, the generational shift that's going on. I, I'm 57 myself, <clears throat> Generation X, and I had a couple of 20-somethings uh, at work. I work in a warehouse, bicycle parts. I told them, you know, they had to call UPS help on the phone right there, 1-800. And they both looked at it like it was, uh, you know, a, a flying saucer. <laughs> they had no idea how to use the damn thing. I'm like, you're, you're kidding me. And I, of course, I'm the boomer there. So, well, no, I'm not, not a boomer. I'm Gen X. And, uh, you know, so I finally had one moment where I could, I could revel in this moment of, wow, <laughs> I have to show you guys how to do something. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. It, 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 it just blows my mind. Something else real quick. I remember years ago seeing one of the head honchos at Google, Eric Schmidt, one of those guys, and he said, our goal, when people put in a search, our goal is to give them one answer. And that freaked me out. I was like, I like it that I get 15 million answers. I'm not going to look through them all, but I'm going to be able to go through all this information and make the best decision mm -hmm. for me. That's gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I have four kids from various age, from like fifth grade through college and, and on. They don't even know. They don't, they don't know the difference. Um, that scares the shit out of me. Well, well by, by, by the time your youngest is uh, is is an adult, uh, they're, they're going to think that based, by, based on Google, George Washington was black. Sub-Saharan black, yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, it's crazy. Yep, the world's flat. I saw all that, all that, Google, that Gemini AI stuff the other day, and I, I was sitting there, you know, talking with my wife, and I got to say, my wife, a few months ago, she was, I started watching Frank, and she's like, oh, who's this guy? Oh, and now she's like, she looks over at the clock, and she's like, hey, it's 7 o'clock, Frank's on. <laughs> so um, nice. it, we're, we've joined the family. But it, it's true, and I said that. I'm like, you know, kids are not going to know. They're going to get a Chromebook given to them at school with AI loaded into it, and they're just going to they're just going to get the answers. I loved going through the encyclopedia when I was a kid. Um, as a parent, I have to add this in too. And Frank, beware of this. 
you know, it's easy to sound like the grumpy guy, you know, ah, the kids, get off my lawn, but it's not that anymore. The, the Internet is it's so hard to fight against it. I live in the woods of Maine. I don't have neighbors. Uh-huh. I, can, I can go ride my bike for miles and not see a soul. I have the whole, you know, uh, who was on the other day? Jay? Jay was talking about getting land in New Hampshire. I live right on the border of Maine and New Hampshire, hundreds of acres. I can't get my kid out of the door. It's impossible. I mean, I can do it. I can be the bad guy and make her, but the sway the Internet holds over kids today is like nothing I've ever seen. And I'm no prude. I'm an old rocker. <laughs> I, I, I want, I'm, I've always told my kids, hey, you can believe anything you want, but you better be able to d- define it. You better be able to explain it. You better be able to defend your views. That's all I ask. But man, that's gone. The, the left is, uh, it's the new Nazi party. Well, leave it there. yeah. Well, that's a that's a profound way of leaving yeah. it, and I, I appreciate the call and just just the imagery of of that kind of open space is help. I hope you have a great night. Thank you so much. But there is a lot there that we're fighting against, and um, I, I instead of I do want to you know I think you guys had said it before. Uh, we may have had some sort of an advan- the advantage of perspective, but that perspective only goes so far because you know, we have perspective of a world that existed 35 years ago, and that is now like maybe two worlds ago. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it, yeah. it changed in... Good way to say it. Yeah, yeah. like you not know, even yeah. just one ago. It's, it's like you got to explain an yeah. in-between world to even yeah. get to that one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, just, we're, we're just as dependent. It's just that yeah. you know, we're yeah. talking about we have a <clears> rare gift of you know fleeting perspective that's all because we're all plugged into the same shit oh yeah so uh but you know i let's it is it is it's a truly unique time to be like that most times i don't mean to like but but i think what you're saying is really important so i'm trying to to repeat it i guess in a way is just most most times in history you didn't know what the fuck was going on you were just like on a farm somewhere doing what you had to like a like essentially a slave it's i it feels like a potential inflection point like we have a chance here to have it not be stupid forever yeah mm-hmm. and I think that's because every bubble bursts um, huh. now uh, as long as as long as people do not take the chip and they are not actually uh, marrying themselves physically to this machinery I think that uh, a lot of people are going to just all ages are just going to say I need a break you know because there's just we we weren't designed for this kind of exposure let's take another call 541 you're on the air go ahead yo hey Uh, surprise is this Frank yes it is who's this Frank this is Olaf aka Ozone and whatnot what's going on man what's on your mind I uh, just digging the show. Thought I'd uh, pipe up and say, "Hey, Matt, uh, I'd like to adopt him as a brother because my brother sucks." <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool, bro. That's yeah, this it. dude—he sounds like a uh, Casey Kasem. He's got like one of those radio voices. This guy here. Do you, do you, oh, no, no shit. No, I actually studied vocal acting, but uh, yeah. I'm a nobody ex-engineer, and um, I'm uh, working on my little property in the middle of Oregon, in the middle of nowhere. Wow. This, that all sounds wonderful. I have a back porch, you know, and that's really. Well, I, and, I, and, I, and I guess I'm very grateful for, and I'm, always, I'm very grateful for that. But when I get calls like the last two, I, I can't imagine going for a walk and not seeing people for miles. I wish, I wish I. I can do that. You know, it, it's it's tough. Well, you, you can shoot them though. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah, I know. Drop them off at the highway. I know you can't can't even. <laughs> no, it's the middle of nowhere in Oregon. You can't you, you can't even walk through your living room naked unless you have all of your your draw, your shades drawn. Doesn't, doesn't no, actually I do do that regularly. Oh, oh well, of course, of course <laughs> you I'm do. Into it. If I if I had a, a plot of land in Oregon, I would uh, I do all my farming naked. It would be naked farming. Uh, well, well, you're welcome to, but you know I'd rather have you and your family come and visit. I would set you up at the private campground. You guys could do whatever you want, chill out, enjoy you and your little stinker. Uh, I would be honored to have you guys you guys visit. 
Are, are bonfires allowed? Yeah, actually, uh, I, I kind of like to light them as long as the weather's right, so they're big enough so you can see them reflect off the clouds. Oh, damn! Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking. I mean, that's about. a jeez, absolutely. Uh, John, the ones that push you back twenty feet. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't been in front of one that big in a long time. And, and actually, probably never. You remember at uh, at the park years ago? They used to do a bonfire around Christmas time, and they would like burn pallets. So it, it got pretty big, but reflect off the clouds. Jo- John Deacon, um, I don't know if it, it was De- Deacon wasn't there for some of those backyard. You would do some fire pit stuff. Oh, I feel back like, in the day, yeah. No, I wasn't there for no. that. Yeah, but, that was but, not Deacon. Do you do you guys do that now though? No, I well, so it's kind of shitty weather. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's the perfect time to burn. Oh, yeah. That's what I keep telling everybody. They're going to need to come to my place because I'm like, well, you know, I'm Frank's out talking about nowhere. cooking steaks and stuff, right? That kind uh, of. I mean, even just a, a fire a for. A fire, for, just a bonfire. Yeah, just a bonfire. Yeah. We definitely have plans of doing something. Yeah, because right Probably now. Several have, things <laughs> to that effect. I have yeah. a dead pine in the backyard. It's got a cut fucking truck I want to blow up. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> We've we've talked about that absolutely. We've talked about blowing up his truck. I want to start a bonfire, and bring a car no, you don't like. Literally just <laughs> blowing it up. What, like what caliber? What I don't know. What, what caliber? We haven't decided. What that caliber much are you going to blow up a truck with? We haven't decided that. Oh, yet. how like how would we blow we just, it up? We've just talked about blowing it up. I figured we just fill it full of tanner, right, and stand back. That was one th- <laughs> thought. Uh, gas can, leave it open, let yep. it evaporate inside the cab. Yep. Yeah, see how much tannerite you can light off with a twenty cal. Oh, I just saw. Do you guys do you know who Styro Pyro is? That YouTube channel? No, no, I don't. <laughs> twenty cal, huh? He, this dude makes laser I'm beams. Sorry, and sh- wrong. I meant I meant twenty two. Twenty two. All right. He, blew, he said he he made a laser. I he just set his or fucking bit. truck on fire from like five hundred yards away. A laser beam. He bought a, like a Chinese unregulated <laughs> laser beam and then ran it through like a sniper scope optics to fucking amplify it or something. Watch this guy's channel, Styro Pro. You won't you won't believe he's a real person. Okay, I'll do it. Hey, caller, one one more uh, question before you you take off. You said you work on your property at, in Oregon. What do you work on? Uh, what what do you do the most? Is it gardening? Is it uh, what is it? I do absolutely everything: the plumbing, the irrigation, the septic system, the power, the solar. Everything that you could do off grid, uh, chicken, ch- chicken, you know, animal, whatever. It's all they do the whole thing. Grid, what's yeah. the biggest? What's the biggest animal that you've slaughtered for, uh, for, for, uh, you know, for consumption? For consumption, no. Yeah. You bring it down to the the local people and let them do it. Okay, I was gonna say. I, uh, uh, th- thank you so much. And who's that? Your wife in the background. Uh, that's uh, Teresa. I don't think she. You know, my my, my wife is uh, my yeah, Chinese living cook. X. Yeah, she follows you on X. Oh, okay. Well, well, well. well say hello again tonight, and I'll, uh, I'll I'll keep a lookout for it. Say hey, I'm I'm from I'm the uh, the the farmer's wife. Yeah. We love you, Frank. You're well, the we, farmer's wife. We well, aren't you? Isn't that what? Did, did I get this wrong? No. Well, anyway. Yeah, no. I, no, I, we just we're just idiots in the country. Oh, okay. Well, just say I, I'm the I'm the idiots co idiot uh, from Oregon. Just say here I am, and thank you guys so much for calling in. All right, no problem. Frank. All right, Great. love your show, man. All right, thank you so much. Yeah, I thought they were married. I don't know. Wife. Sounds like a nice Farmer's little existence wife. there. Have you guys ever had to slaughter a pig? Ah, uh, no. No, I don't think so. My my uh, white uh, yeah my barbecue my oldest daughter's fair uh, my oldest daughter's fiance does they just did one two weeks ago really yeah I do my own deer if I kill deer during hunting season I do my own deer okay yep John do you do you uh, do you hunt with Deacon no you haven't done that yet we don't hunt the same animal what do you hunt human ah now we're getting down to the nitty gritty that's it. No, um, I do. We have not. That's kind of part of the shit we want to do, and it gets a little bit nicer. Yeah. Uh, Matt, when was the last time you took up a contract for murder? <laughs> Would you, oh, I murdered a couple rodents a few days ago. Oh, rodents! You know, Matt was the exterminator in our last in our last studio, and boy, oh boy, did he have a! It was <laughs> slaughtered <laughs> dozen of my dozens. dozens of mice. Guys, let me tell you something. Before Bad. we left. Before, before we left there, there was, 
I the, the southern border is nothing compared. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing compared to what happened to us. And Pyretta, the cat that you met oh, over there, uh -huh. uh, she's the only thing that kept these mice inside of the storage closet because we did not. She, she would stare at the wall the entire time. They'd never crossed the boundary from the storage closet into the rest of the studio. But uh, we said, you know, Matt, can you come by and just take a look at behind some of the stuff in the storage closet? Just see, she's staring. There has to be something in there. He found droppings. He found droppings. He said, I'm going to lay some traps down there. Within 10 hours, the, the <laughs> popping sounds. Let me, when I tell you that we were catching, Matt was catching two and three heads to a trap. <laughs> oh my God. It was a wow. It was incredible. <laughs> oh my God. It was, a, it, was a, it was horrible. I don't even know what the hell's going on. And the fact that they never crossed into the studio. Pyretta, she was just like Gandalf or something like that. She's like, you shall not, <laughs> not pass. pass. <laughs> it just didn't happen. So. Oh my God. I know. That's those, crazy. I know. Thankfully, not two not, or three to a trap. That's that's insane. I mean, that's it was a breeding ground. <laughs> he, was he was finding parents. He was finding children. Oh, I'll bet. I slaughtered generations. Oh man. <laughs> yes. I love when Matt talks about his work. <laughs> Did you have a war face with that you use when you do that? Too? It's just I have no emotion towards it. <laughs> so you know it's real. He's not angry. He just is totally unfeeling. Yeah, it's yeah. cold inside. I know. It has to be done. I know. I saw it. I, I love it. I love it. So anyway, so <laughs> let's take one more call. Uh, 252, you're on the air. Go ahead. What's up, Frank? Who's John this? from North Carolina. Hey, what's up, John? Not uh, much. Just moving fertilizer from point A to point B in this big ass piece of shit loader. Okay. Um, I just wanted to call. Uh, it's kind of crazy how things go first full circle on your show. When I first tuned in, it was like four years ago. My Spotify shot, uh, uh, San Tripoli show ended, and then it, your show came on. It was you and Matt, and I've been listening ever since. But when I started moving across the aisle and and starting to pay attention to politics, I was watching John Ward videos all the time, and now here he is on your show. So it's it's pretty cool how everything kind of comes full circle in some terms, you know. And then I see you guys together bullshitting on on uh, on the show, which is I think is pretty cool. And uh, I love it, man. It's good stuff. I just wanted to call in to say that. Um, Y'all have a good one. Thank you so much, John. Cheers. It's great to hear from you. And you know, uh, uh, he brings up something I think is really interesting. From uh, my personal perspective, it's probably the same for others out there, but there's so many people out there doing one thing or another. If you're in the media space and you're you know, creating whatever kind of show you want to bring to the public, I feel that law of attraction, vibration, really is uh, the main driver there because, I don't know, you, you watch something and you're just like, yeah, okay. Uh, the John Ward ch channel said, this guy, I got to be friends with. I don't know how it's going to happen. It's just going to happen. It's going to happen. And that's that's really the way it is for a lot of the people that are in our it, it, are in our circles at this point. And I think about over the last seven years, the kinds of um, the kinds of I don't know crossover and we're we're talking about global networks of shows and presentations and thoughts and music and all that stuff. That did not. That is all 100% voluntary. That came together under its own volition. That did not have some billion-dollar studio directing this. Uh, you know, putting people together for collaborations, trying to mix and match all the ratings and stuff. The fact that this is a completely spontaneous space of media is, I think, the most exciting thing about it because it has the most flexibility. When well, another full circle there is what Anthony was talking about earlier, is your best shit comes out when you like what you're doing. Yeah. And when you're doing it for it, the capital I, I mean, it's, it's, you know, you said when somebody's faking it, you don't, it's, it, it's even for me, it's anyone that's doing any kind of art, not for the art for any reason other than for the best possible, whatever that might be. And I, and I think that that's kind of what this whole culture is, is it's, it is a work of art 
a lot of people like we're close to seeing what that's going to look like i think if yes. that makes any fucking sense. Oh, it will. It will in October when this uh, feature film you have coming out. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. But no, yes. I know. It'll be a part of it. That'll erase all the <laughs> progress we make. <laughs> That'll be year zero. <laughs> It'll be like shaking hands with the left of fucking okay. doves flying and shit, and then that movie will drop. That's you know. it. Okay. Like let's Mars Attacks. Taking another call from 617. You're on the air. Who's this? Hey, how you doing? This is Butch from New Hampshire. Butch from New Hampshire. We got okay, great. We got New England is in the house tonight. How you doing, Butch? I'm doing great, Frank. First time caller, long time listener. You're awesome, and your whole show is awesome. But John, I was worried you got picked up with the J6 people. Honestly, I wondered about you for a couple of years, man. Uh, it, people had all types of uh, theories and, and concerns, John. I'm telling you. And these are the calls and the emails I would get constantly. I said, don't worry, he's fine. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what he is. But he lets me know that he's I okay. was arresting people. <laughs> yeah, he, he was part of the He was working for the DOJ. Yeah, I was there. You want to know what I was oh my doing? God. Do you remember hey, that? I got to say, I, no. I love your Patrick Henry reiteration speech. Oh, I appreciate that's that. always been one of my favorite things you've done. I believe that's still out there. Just not on YouTube. I... Uh, it's not on YouTube. I found it on uh, Rumble, and I posted it on my Ooh. X page. Uh, nice. That was a popular one, so I appreciate you. You know, th there's other things there, too, that the caller is bringing up um, that I think is really great. It's, it's not even so much more about um, what a uh, person can create just from, you know, from scratch, but also how a person can gather people together to listen to something that's already been done and just have a conversation about it. Um, you and I highlighted some of the same things at one point. Uh, number one, chief among them, the first thing that comes to mind is John Denver speaking about all of the, the at the censorship meetings, the RIAA meetings, like the, the Twisted Sister, the, the Tipper Gore meetings. Right, okay. Uh, those are amazing. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, and, and those are the types of things that people need to hear again. I mean, when I when I heard that for the first time, uh, you know, a decade ago or so, th that's when John Denver became a bona fide badass for me. Even if, even if I well, never it's really amazing that they actually tried to stop that song, Rocky Mountain High, and he had to stand up for it yeah. because he was a badass. He really was a badass. So that's good. It, it's and I want to say back about uh, traveling the country with a cell phone. I traveled the country for four years with a trucker atlas. And let me tell you, when you find a beltway that either doesn't exist because it's gone or it just hasn't been built yet or it's a thought of someone that wrote the map but it never, ever happened, those were fun. <laughs> that is cool. That is cool. The, the one the thing, the thing that is least fun is when you're approaching a bridge or something like that with the GPS and it just doesn't know where you are. At least the first generation, like the Magellans and the and all that stuff, they, the bridges used to freak them out. Bodies of water, all of a sudden you're in a place. It looks like you're in no man's land, but you're definitely on a road. It hadn't been mapped fully yet. Um, but oh I, yeah. Uh, but I have myself. I have two major road atlases now that are a part of my go bag. So I um I, I definitely have all of that on paper, and it's a recent one too. So all the roads should oh, be there. Smart. Mm -hmm. You have to do that. I mean, if an EMP hits, what are you going to do? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I'm going to have my wife and my daughter on my shoulders as I as I bicycle around because my car is going to be worth a shit. You know, you're not, and that's the other thing. That's unless what Alex Jones thinks they're about to do, dude. Unless I, well, I, I mean, yeah, you got to figure out how to make a Faraday cage for your essentials. Get yourself an old Chevy truck with points and start burying shit. Well, has anybody seen, and my girlfriend pointed this out to me, that she showed me the video of this. Um, they're stockpiling. The government is stockpiling those old vehicles. Pre-computer. See? Pre-computer. Now, why is the government stockpiling hundreds, hundreds, thousands of these vehicles pre-computer if they're not expecting something? And right. everybody knows there's no plan for anything. Maybe they don't have a See, plan. I should have got a Chevelle. Well, well, <laughs> I mean, one thing that's on my mind that has been for a while is, I mean, I'm old enough to remember. Of course, we all are, but old enough to remember when Trump was president in his last year, 
whenever anything happened, people rioted. But now we got 10 million more people in the country that oh, yeah. don't Invited. give a damn about what is really going on. And I, I, God willing, Trump gets in, but the first decision he makes is going to be they're going to storm Washington, as far as I see, because what's stopping them? What was stopping them before when they were mostly Americans and had purpose? But now you've, you're going to have millions of people that just don't care and will be activated. And who's going to stop them? It's a it, that that go. And thank you for the call. It goes a lot, a lot in line with all of the theories about what that U.N. blue helmets invasion would look like one day. It wouldn't be uh, it wouldn't be blue helmets. No, it's not going to look like that. It's going to who who the hell knows, by the way. Uh, it, it is going to be 2025 is the one I'm really worried about. This year is going to be like the craziest kind of television you're ever going to watch in your life. It already has been weird. I can't believe that we had another uh, balloon or some kind of an object yeah, in the sky. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I can't believe. Uh, and it two, was amateur, they're saying it was amateur. Two Februaries in a row. Is that is that for real now? Come on. Um, amateurs, and but it picked up the headlines and everybody got crazy about it. Um We'll see where it all goes. Here are some super chats. I just want to get around to these before I I get buried. Stostube, thank you so much for the blessing. Magical Trevor, 75. What's going on, Trevor? He's deep into the meme game out there. Uh, there's definitely a reawakening of culture on the right. If you look at the stuff that folks like geeks and gamers are doing as well, um, as like ISOM comics, uh, there's a lot to be excited about. And uh, yeah, absolutely. There is. That's why I'm not. That's why I said when I, I brought that up to to get John and everybody's uh, thoughts about where we are and the opportunities that that are before us. I don't take that much of a you know we're we're dead in the water culturally kind of a stance. We, when you think about how long it took for the walls to get built up around us and then for some of those walls to crash down on top of us, you know it's gonna take what give us a couple of years to to, to build out from under. Uh, to get us or to dig ourselves out and to to try some new things in the last five years alone I mean how many new social media video mm. streaming platforms have popped up yeah. to kind of supplement YouTube I understand that a lot of that contributes to echo chambers but it, it uh, the real question is is technology like that only going to be reserved for a, 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 a small amount of people or is is movies is storytelling really going to be only reserved for a small amount of people to, to to tell those stories or are we going to be a part of some kind of a parallel economy of sorts and that's uh it takes some time we haven't even been doing this for a decade i think with in earnest so it, it is very encouraging to me let's take another call 971 you're on the air go ahead hey frank it's maggie how are you doing great welcome back excellent thank you uh Hey, boy. Hey. Uh, Good evening. Hey. So I just wanted to uh, offer a little bit of a white pill to you guys tonight. Um, uh, I think it was not maybe last weekend, but maybe the weekend before <clears throat> Mr. Ward was having a live stream. And I, I had super chatted him about the conversation between Tucker Carlson and Brett Weinstein, Weinstein, whatever. And um, part of part of uh, part of his ultimate message there was that it's like a David and Goliath situation, and that the fact is that the people on the other side they have almost all the resources and all the all the uh, the media on their side. However. It was just a, a mere few people and a few podcasts who probably uh, stemmed the tide of the insanity that they were doing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I, I understand yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. And so I just wanted to offer that to you guys and just say that uh, we appreciate all of you. Hey, you know, the uh, the Battle of Thermopylae is a great great uh you know lesson to be learned there you know 300 yeah. 300 yeah. against uh tens of thousands 
it's just really about positioning and it's really about the the, the strength of will and I yeah I don't I, and, and and that's that's to, to say Maggie that's to even say or to accept the idea that we are some some sort of a minority I, I really do believe that we're not you know there's just different levels of uh, there's different levels of of I don't know uh, consciousness of action action I think action and w yeah will action to will or will to action whatever but all of that every bit of that is essential and it's important and so just I don't want to lose sight of that and I don't want anybody else to like I I just try to hold on to that you know yes well thank you for yeah. that is much needed thank you Maggie thanks gentlemen all right take care. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting close to the end here. Uh, we had a wonderful day working on some stuff. I can't wait to see. Uh, we have a lot more to do, too. So this has been the 90 minutes or so that we've had together has been a real, real, uh, real bonus. How are we leaving this one off? What are we going to do? First of all, all everybody yeah. in this room has got to get together again and do this because Absolutely. this has been fun. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And we got to come up with bits, too, next time just for... You know, because the the real focus of our getting together wasn't the broadcast today. True. So we got to come up. We with, owe you one to come together with bits. Yeah, we do. <laughs> and you got some New York pizza today too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Some good stuff from Frankie uh -huh. and Louis. We got to get you. That where it was, Frankie and Louis. I gotta remember Get that. you guys down to our place at some point yes. too. Yep. Would we shoot guns? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Can drink some raw milk there, right? It's legal there. Yeah, from a cow's yeah. Smuggle titty. some raw milk. I back. can get you some. I know enough Amish, buddy. I can get you whatever you want down yeah, there. Want You'll be dub uttering mm, right yeah. under that. You'll be down there. Sexy yep. some cream Straight on top. From the other. <laughs> you know what I would like to do? I would like to take shots of goat kefir with you guys as we shot. Yeah. You know, we should take a shot of goat kefir and then we should shoot shotguns. <laughs> <laughs> Say that one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Should we take a shot? You look at what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> we'd be the baddest. We'd be the baddest guys in Pennsylvania, taking <laughs> shots of raw dairy and shooting things. Oh boy, oh, whatever. I'll bring a hookah down there. I'll I'll contribute that. Anyway, here uh, here's one from nine two five Wild G says we need to know what John's hat says. Oh, oh, I forget oh, which one I picked. I think it's Robert Paulson. Only my best, Robert Paulson. Do you know the whole only my best thing? I found this out not too long ago when we started the mezzanine. What? So Trump's hat. Are you able to pi pull up pictures from the internet live on the show? I think so, yeah. Go Google or whatever search engine you prefer. Buster Douglas. Uh-huh. Only my best hat. Buster Douglas. It's hilarious that I've talked about this on like 10 of my shows. Yeah, I never I, bothered to pull this picture yeah. up, and then we come on Frank's, and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm, a pro I'm actually a professional. I should have wore my hat. Uh, so Trump's hat, this isn't explicitly stated anywhere by Trump's people or whatever. It's just the truth. I'm just telling you that. Is based off of this hat from James Buster Douglas, which he wore when he famously defeated Mike Tyson. There it is. Th this is really the inspiration. I did not know this was the inspiration for it. That yep. and Trump yep. was very much aware of. He might have even been at that fight. I think Probably. he was at that fight. I think he was at that fight. I would, yes. So I, I did positive. a bit of research and then also just m making it up. That is 100% the hat that Trump based the MAGA hat off of. Mm -hmm. And so we couldn't find anyone in China that would make us that little curved part on the top. They say, straight rata only. <laughs> <laughs> no, ah, only Stret Rata. So we're like, all right, Stret Rata. And uh, so we got a couple of versions of it. Yeah, I didn't wear it. That's why I said I should have wore mine. And I think it's You have a Johnny Mojack one? Yeah, the Johnny Mojack. I think it's See, I didn't even know any. So I'm, like, I'm missing a lot of backstories This here. is how yeah. bad I am at yeah. business. I've made a product that I can't, because <laughs> it's got to be a different name every time. Every time. Fuck that. No one else can have this one. This one's mine. Yeah, you can't you have know mine. Robert There's Paulson. Only one Johnny Mojack. Surely. I, I, yeah, yeah. But, Fight but, Club? Well, yeah, but because, uh, whatchamacallit, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, oh God. We're going to have to get these guys. I don't know. The, the, I'm trying. The, the actor's name is right. Is it me? You're from Fight Club or something? Yes, yes. Ed Norton? Brad Pitt? Meatloaf? Oh, Meatloaf, yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay. Milo. Yeah. Talking about Bob. Patel. Bob with boobs. 
Spa with boobs. Yeah, that's Robert Paulson. Yeah. That's his name. That might I, be the only name in the movie. Is it? No. Well, no, that's it. Tyler Durden. Yeah, but that's a uh, that's a fabrication. <laughs> it's still a name. It's a it's a it's a. Do you pseudonym. believe that? Um, oh my God! What's her freaking name? Marla. Do you think she's real? Supposedly she's not. Count Dankula went on a rant about this on Twitter. You know what? I never even considered that. Maybe none of the people were real though. <laughs> Maybe everyone was real except the narrator. I always thought that she was real. Ah. <laughs> I always thought that she was real. She, her reactions. Apparently, always... in the book, it's very clear that she's not. I yeah. guess that's what oh, Count okay. Dankula said. Well, see, I never read the book. I never read the book. Maybe that's what we'll do one day uh, for 2025. Your book uh, club. Book club. By the way, oh, I think cool. that's how we'll end. You're going to be doing cool. book club with me in October. Shit. Ha uh ha. -huh. Committed to that? Yeah, you did. Are we uh, doing Steppenwolf? At I, least? I, I, I I took your. I took I took your lead on that one. Is, no, I'm down. I'm down. Is Steppenwolf something everybody's going to love? No. Okay. It's well, for Mad Men only. Literally, it's written in the book. I think it's awesome. It's like a book inside of a book inside of a book. All right, then fuck it. But I want to read something maddening uh, the, the a week before the election. So. Oh. I know. Yeah. What, oh, I want coffee. We could do. I bet I could yeah, pick I up something too. a little yeah. less heavy. We got time. We Frank, got time. We could both read My that. Time might be running out. So mm -hmm. I know. We'll see how the election. <laughs> Matt has out. Matt has committed to kill himself if Trump doesn't oh, win. Oh no no so no! So we only no, have a few more months with no. him. It's gonna happen if he loses. <laughs> the day after the election, if he doesn't win, I hope the hope the day after, no no it's a Tuesday usually the election yeah, day. Yeah. I can't wait until the Friday after the election. <laughs> if he doesn't win, which I'm not I'm not rooting for one thing, but if it happens where he doesn't win, I I can't wait because I can't wait to see why he says he didn't go through with it because i would have to wait for him to be because <laughs> then i have to no 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 i'm waiting until he's reinstated oh man but can you just well we don't have to imagine it it's coming before you know it yeah but man. october 2024 every week four weeks of just buzzing it's going to be just buzzing. It doesn't even matter if you're oh, into it or not. It's going to be crazy. It's everything. It's going to be nuts. It's I'm kind of like, nuts. when is the point when, like, the... I, I feel like most people still aren't, honestly, really paying that much attention. Do you get that vibe? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, there, There is something so dead right now. I, I, surely that'll happen before October. No? Yeah, this summer. This summer's going to be lit. I think so, too. I, I, I don't know what I... Is I don't there going to be... Is. Any, is, is Disease X coming? It might be, There's or maybe so Alex Jones thinks they're going to do a uh, EMP blast before mm -hmm. the election. Mm -hmm. Well, they're stringing Ukraine along for one reason or another. That is a tinderbox scenario. They've been trying to bait Putin into doing something crazy, and his uh, and his uh, you know fortitude and his con his self control is the only thing that has kept the world from burning right now. It's pretty much, fucking seems like that. Yeah, <laughs> I dude, I, he's smart enough not to. To do anything, like, dude, it thank seems God like. it's not I mean, another Biden over there in charge. Can you fucking imagine uh, what'd be going on right now? If he was any more impulsive, things would be. Oh, big. so uh, fuck, I don't we'd know. We'd be all under a fucking nuclear attack right now if he was any more impulsive. I did so. I, I'm me. Him and GG. I'm I'm biding my time, <laughs> biding my time, and uh, w we know what they have promised over the years, from cyber pandemics to disease X and other biological. We got the loom of war all over. I just, it, but anything in their toolkit, I think they'll try it this year. Right. So anything again, hundred thousand Chinese poured over the border in the last what six eight months. We true? were watching video the other yeah. day. They had to, they used Google Translate to talk to some of these people <laughs> coming over, and you know what most of them are military aged males. You know, here's a here's a potential solution, and it's genius. Let me it's, down there all hinges less on than the, a thousand yards and give me, you know, two no, it's cases. even better than that. Of rounds. And I... <laughs> <laughs> you get one shot Matt, at it. You but coming, Matt? <laughs> you got to time it right. I can do it. <laughs> right when everybody comes into the U.S., we just go to where they came from. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All of a sudden, there we're you go. Yeah, like they're walking. They're like, why are they walking past us? Is yeah, that a great idea. That what might be kind of hard because you know those countries they have something you know things called you know, immigration laws. <laughs> but there's a lot of empty houses now. Didn't we Just have say, those? At one they're time. all here. There's got to be some open houses down there. There's right? got to at least be a couple of overpasses. <laughs> or a couple <laughs> mud huts that we can live under. <laughs> so we're not totally homeless. Ranks. I think they call it mesas. <laughs> I think they call it um, favelas. Favelas in Brazil. Like, you know, uh, ba- uh, whatchamacallit, Fast and the Furious 5? That's where they go to Brazil. Yeah. Are you sure that wasn't Fast 6? <laughs> fast 6, listen, Fast Seven 5. And a half. Fast 6 was already, that's that's when it, it you know, uh, believability was already ridiculous. <laughs> oh, my, three, three. Three, okay. No, but six was when you had <laughs> six was when you is that had, when they'd come out of the airplane and shit. They, ju- they six is when they're jumping from hi- leaping off of cars on one side of a highway down oh. to lower levels of the highway. The, six it jumps the shark. And that's uh, why we watch them still. I don't know. If is, you which, drive a lot, you can get that good. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a practice issue. <laughs> can I find that on here? Which, want, which which the number was the one that they jumped it from one building to the other over in seven. Dubai? I seven. stopped watching okay. after the first one. <laughs> Fast I never, six, I rock leap. Hold on, the rock leap scene. Somebody has to have this. But I know they kept getting more ridiculous oh, yeah. as they went yeah. on, just yeah. like the Die Hard movies. Oh wait, <laughs> like wait a second. Die Hard okay, here here is the here's the end of <laughs> this is even more, more ridiculous than than the rock jumping <laughs> off of one highway down to the other. This is when oh. Dom saves Letty from across. You wait until, wait, just, just wait. Wait, what the hell? How, hold on, wait a second. I never saw this. All right, wait, 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 wait. You know their names and shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, watch. Watch I this. Told you, I don't even know what, I know. Watch what happens here. Uh-oh. Watch Vin Diesel. He has to just, <laughs> he's separated by a highway. They're on a, it's a bridge. <laughs> it's a bridge, they're over water. Here, watch this. Here comes Vin Diesel. He's oh, getting out of the car. Oh, hell, I can do this. Oh, really? She's got thrown. And now he jumps over. Wait, what? Come on. What? what? And he's fine. <laughs> and he's fine. <laughs> he's, he's fine. Now he... He's sm- He just... <laughs> he's fine. He should be... Oh my that, God, uh, dude! Yeah, it's right. hilarious. Okay. You got to watch those right. movies. The the, the comedy windshield factor. broke his fall. Yeah, he man. like anticipate. He was launching before <laughs> she was. He's already being launched at over a hundred miles an hour. He's like, I he, see where she's gonna be in the future. And he I'm there. catches her over this 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 <laughs> suspension bridge, and then turns his back to the windshield and breaks it at oh, like a hundred miles an hour. Cushion, man. Cushion that shit. Jesus. No, a it, safety it, glass, auto glass, real. His back isn't even bloody. That's how that glass works. He actually did that. All Ask me how I know one, you've never been in a car take. accident. He did that all in one take. <laughs> that was yeah. one. He only he said he said, listen, I only got one take. They only they, they only took half a take for that. Believe it or not, that wasn't even a full take. <laughs> uh, I'll find more clips. It I, actually wasn't uh, even supposed to happen. That <laughs> just was an accident. <laughs> Sometimes the magic. The fucking girl with the lunch <laughs> crashed. There's magic oh, that happens. All right, guys. Well, listen, it's been wonderful to have you all on, and uh, and I, I'm looking forward to the next time. Good work. To, oh, wait. Let me just get through these super chats that just came in. C. Blanche, thank you. Chai Possum says, hi, Frank, Matt, Aunt John Deacon. Uh, NJSF, thank you. Cave Toad says, was Ant wearing a kilt when he was singing Itzy? Reminds me of corn. <laughs> Great show, Frank. Were you wearing a kilt, Anthony? No. <laughs> no, he was not. He was wearing a dress. Yes. <laughs> Get it right. <laughs> Doug625 says, I've never been using a cell phone in a dream, but I have dreamt I lost my phone and woke up relieved. Cave Toad uh, says, next shirt for Quite Frankly Line needs to be Matt's stacked George T. Uh, well, I guess we can recreate it. Somebody already made it. Um, let's see here. Cave Toad says, Obama's cash for Junkers was a part of the start of the control uh, get rid of vulnerable vehicles. I remember that. Mm, that was 1990. I, did that. I do remember that now. That was yeah. 2009. I wow. donated a car to that. They that, wow. gave me like $200. In fact, <laughs> I had $200. Ca- cash it, was, it, was, it was totaled. It oh, was totaled. Well, all right, all right. But cash for clunkers, I remember that was yes. going on in 2009. I remember yeah. it happening while I was on like a, a, a Little League um, 
a little league field trip or whatever. Um, we were coaching. I was coaching at some in some place in Maryland, and it was. I don't know how it came up the cash for clunkers thing, but it was also at the time when all of the cell phones started getting distributed. The Obama phones, around the same time, is when oh, a yeah. lot of that started yeah. coming up. Yeah. Let's see yeah. here. Um, Fox Lady, Foxy Lady, thank you. Winston, Dave, thank you. Everybody, it's been a real, real treat to have uh, this this night. It's been a long time since we did a Saturday. Car Guys New England said, Shala and I are happy to spend our Saturday with you, Matt, and your guests. And Jay Britt says, hey, Frank, what a great gathering. Awesome show. All right. Well, with that, you guys want to uh, wish everybody goodbye, love you, whatever the hell you want to say to people, serenade them. Go ahead. Talking to us. Yeah, go ahead, Talking John. You first. Go I'll, ahead. No, wait a minute. We we do our thing. I don't even know what you're talking about, man. Just always remember. No, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, go for it. Never forget. If you yeah. know what you're doing, you'll be fine. <laughs> He's supposed to have. We're working on this. He changes it every time. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. If you know what you're doing, you're you'll fine. You'll be fine. Oh, see? Indeed. Fucking said it different <laughs> again. <laughs> I'm you not going to do that. Uh, oh, we him. are. So, yes, we filmed some stuff. I'm going to get that up as fast as I can, Frank. Okay. Well, listen, we're here to, to to shoot the rest of it because the more creepy scenes haven't even been done yet. I know. We I did. can't wait. We've got some good stuff coming. Matt, thank you for being here. God is Lord. God is Lord. Uh, 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 John, Deacon, uh, if you guys want to attend 730 Mass with me tomorrow, you just let me know before you leave. And then Anthony, <laughs> Anthony, thank you so much for being here, my friend. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys and gals, have a wonderful rest of your weekend. We will see you soon. I'll see you on Monday. It'll be a good one. That's it. That's it for us. Nighty night. I'll catch you on the flip side. Quite frankly, is filmed before a live studio audience, and now our super chatter, starting with Brother Noomsy. What's going on, Joel? Stostu, Magical Trevor, Car Guys New England, Jay Brits, and a wonderful, the cavalry came in with the gold pills. Thank you guys and gals so much. All over the internet, I'll see you on Monday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. <laughs>